Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dental Digest with the Study Boards. This is Dr. Trehan and today we will be diving into an essential topic in oral pathology, odontogenic cysts. And today we will focus only on the radicular cysts. Alright, let's start by understanding what we mean by a cyst. Simply put it as a pathologic cavity containing fluid, semi-fluid or a gaseous content. Now importantly, this cavity isn't formed by accumulation of pus. It's usually but not always lined by epithelium. Now when we talk about odontogenic cysts, we are referring to cysts that originate from the tissues involved in tooth development. Now the word odontogenic here gives us a clue here relating to that of a tooth which is related to the word odonto and genic means formation. So odontogenic cysts are essentially cysts that form from leftover epithelial cells involved in forming our teeth. Now let's take a look at how odontogenic cysts are classified. Now these cysts can be categorized in various ways but the method that we will be discussing in this video is the most common and straightforward one to remember. Now we can break them into two main groups developmental cysts and inflammatory cysts. Let's talk about developmental cysts first. Now these type of cysts have an unknown origin and importantly they don't result from inflammation. Examples here will include dentigerous cysts, eruption cysts and odontogenic keratocysts to name a few. Now the second one is inflammatory cysts. Now as the name suggests that they are the ones that form because of inflammation. Now some common examples will be your periapical cysts, residual cysts, paradental cysts and so on. Now we can also classify these based upon from where they come from. Now some originate from cell rests of molasses, others may come from reduced enamel epithelium and some may even come from dental lamina. And finally, there are some unclassified cysts as well that don't quite fit into any of these categories. Now that you have some basic understanding clear, let's start with radicular cysts starting with its origin, then we will talk about its clinical features, then we move on to radiographical features, histopathology, complications, treatment and finally differential diagnosis. So let's break it down step by step. So radicular cyst is also known as periapical cyst and this is the most common type of odontogenic cyst. But why is it so common and what makes it so different? Now radicular cysts are classified as inflammatory cysts meaning that they form as a result of an inflammation. Specifically this inflammation is related to pulp of the tooth. And one important point to remember here is that a radicular cyst is always associated with a non-vital tooth. This is an exam question. So whenever we come across a radicular cyst, we know it's a reaction to the infection and the tissue death that has happened within the tooth. Now let's understand how radicular cysts form and what initiates this process. Now a key element here is the epithelial rests of molasses or ERM. Now just understand this that whenever the pulp of the tooth dies, inflammation kicks in which then stimulates the epithelial rests of molasses, ERM. This activation of ERM cells leads to the formation of a cyst around the infected area. Now let's go over some clinical features of radicular cyst. Firstly, radicular cysts are slow growing. They expand gradually over a period of time, which means that they can often go unnoticed for a very long period since they don't cause immediate or aggressive changes. Another important feature here is that, that they are typically asymptomatic unless they get secondarily infected. Lastly, patients with radicular cyst might have a history of tooth pain, either recent or a while back which helps us connect the cyst to a previously non-vital tooth. Now for the radiographical features of a radicular cyst, we see a round or oval radiolucent area located at the apex of the root of a non-vital tooth. Now an important detail to note here is that the cyst as it grows, it starts to resorb the tooth's root. So if you observe signs of like root resorption on a radiograph like a shortened or irregular root structure, it can serve as a clue, as a hint to the presence of a radicular cyst. Let's talk about histopathology of the radicular cyst as it has some distinctive elements to keep in mind. First of all, the cyst's lining is made up of stratified squamous epithelium now which can vary in thickness and it often shows signs of hyperplasia. 
Now, as a student who is preparing for INBDE or ADAT or AFK examination, you should know the difference between hyperplasia, hypertrophy and hypoplasia. Let's talk further now. Now, inside the cyst or in the lumen, we will find some necrotic debris, various inflammatory cells and the characteristic cholesterol clefts. This is an exam question. Now, moving to the cyst wall, it's primarily fibrous tissue with chronic inflammatory cells like lymphocytes and plasma cells. And if there is an active infection, you might even see neutrophils that have been mixed in now. And lastly, there are some special features you might encounter such as hyalinized areas and occasionally structures known as Rushton bodies. Exam question again. These are unique hyaline formations that can help confirm the diagnosis of a radicular cyst. This is important. Now let's look into some complications. An untreated radicular cyst can lead to several issues. It can cause swelling, pain and even expansion of the surrounding bone. And there is also a risk of the tooth mobility and root resorption as we have already discussed. And in some cases nearby teeth may even get displaced due to the cyst's growth. Let's talk about the treatment approach now for the radicular cyst. We generally start with non-surgical methodologies and proceed to surgical options later on. Now for the non-surgical treatment, the primary method is root canal therapy. Following it, we move ahead with surgical interventions and that may include enucleation or mastipulization. Now, enucleation involves surgically removing the entire cyst along with its lining and marsupialization involves creating an opening that will help the cyst to drain slowly and gradually and it will shrink over a period of time. And this is often preferred for larger cysts that are very close to the vital structures as it is less invasive kind of a procedure. Now let's talk about the differential diagnosis. Now differential diagnosis is very important. You must know the difference of how radicular cyst may be confused with other cysts or other lesions. Let's go over a few key differential diagnoses to consider. First of all, we have periapical granuloma. Like a radicular cyst, it's a chronic inflammatory lesion that forms at the apex of a non-vital tooth. However, a granuloma does not have the epithelial lining that defines a cyst. So it's more of a soft tissue lesion. Radiographically, granulomas tend to be smaller and less well-defined than cysts. Next, we have periapical abscess. Now, periapical abscess also appears as a radiolucency at the tooth apex and results from an infection. Now, the key difference here is that the abscesses often have a more acute symptom, like you will have pain or swelling, which is less typical for that of a cyst. The radiographic appearance of an abscess may show irregular borders and signs of active infection. Then we should consider periapical cemento-osseous dysplasia. Now this condition commonly appears in the lower front teeth, lower anterior teeth and may initially resemble a cyst. However, as it matures, it takes on a mixed radiolucent, radio-opaque appearance which is a distinguishing feature here. And finally, we have something that's called periapical scar. So after an injury or a surgery, the healing process can leave a radiolucent area at the tooth's apex. And unlike a cyst or granuloma, a scar usually does not cause any pain or swelling and tends to remain stable over a period of time. So when you see a radiolucent area on a radiograph, remember to consider these possibilities. Look for the features like lesion borders, presence of any acute symptoms and patient history to differentiate between these conditions and radicular cyst. So here is a summary of today's video on radicular cysts. We started by understanding that radicular cysts are one of the most common odontogenic cysts, typically forming around the apex of a non-vital tooth in response to chronic inflammation. Then they originate from epithelial cells called epithelial rests of molasses, which are remnants of the Hertwig's root sheath involved in tooth development. Now, in terms of clinical features, radicular cysts are often asymptomatic. However, if they grow large enough, they may even cause swelling, pain and even mobility of the affected teeth. On radiographs, radicular cysts appear as small, round, oval, radiolucent areas at the root apex, especially around the non-vital teeth. And as they grow, they can sometimes cause root resorption. So it is essential to look for these signs on the x-rays. 
then we discussed histology and the complications untreated cysts can lead to complications like swelling cortical expansion pain even root resorption and then they may also push the surrounding teeth out of the position if they are large enough to do that and when it comes to treatment cysts are often managed by root canal therapy followed by enucleation to remove the cyst or marsupialization to reduce its size gradually lastly we reviewed differential diagnosis comparing radicular cysts to conditions like periapical granuloma periapical abscesses and periapical cementoosseous dysplasia highlighting key features that help distinguish them thank you so much for watching this video if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future updates share your thoughts in the comments below and we will see you in the next video thank you